This is Joe Coleman, the new television champion, the super soldier, the genetic jackpot, the jack knight, the tan lantern, and the master of the universe. This is the beast of nature, the freak, Rob Terry. Hi, I'm OVW official Josh Ashcraft. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at Triple Threat Talk. I'm Dean Hill. This is Ricky Chevy, and I'm the blue collar millionaire. I'm Mr. Peck. That's great every time. Spectacular. We're the Brony Brothers. I am the One Go Revolution, Taylor Hendricks. This is Brandon Espinosa. I'm the Assassin. I'm Bruno Raul Limata. I'm James Moose Thomas. I'm Shiloh Jones. My name is Ron Head. I'm the announcer for OVW. I'm Jamin Olivencia. I'm Alex Silva. I'm Rocco Bellagio. I'm Kerry Bodie How about it, Wrestler Fan Advocate? Scott Bell, Constantine. I'm Ranch Red. My name is Muhammad Ali. I am. I'm Paradise. This is Jack Black. This is Ohio Valley Wrestling. Referee Chris Sharp. This is Sexy Sean Casey. I'm Chris Silvio. This is Michael Hayes. This is Jason Wayne. And you're watching Triple Threat Talk. <laughs> to episode 78 of Triple Threat Talk. What are you looking at? Two things. One, welcome back. Thank yes, welcome back. back. Welcome back. Welcome yeah, back. thank you. And, and um... I'm befuddled. You know... What happened a lot? You know, though? here's the thing, right? We've had 77 episodes on this show, and we had the right and the privilege to call him a bear because <laughs> of the facial hair. But now, you know what I think it is? What? I think he saw the Emma Smith commercial. Your gray facial hair has put you in a rocking chair. Your beard is weird. Your stash is trash. He's like, oh, it's bad. <laughs> so we had to shave it off. <laughs> so. No, I got the glasses, and uh, I figured it was time to, you know, just change my look overall. I think uh, Erica appreciates a nice, smoother face, yes. too. So. Uh, did you just shave it to be more intellectual looking? Pretty much, yeah. Head. I mean, I look like 100 IQ points smarter, which is like some kind of genius you can't even take. Well, everyone, know, everyone knows looks can be deceiving. That's yeah, true. So. That's true. You should know. <laughs> But anyways, welcome back. It is good to be on the air on this very special edition of Triple Threat Talk, as it is 12-12-12 today. What's going on? Something happening? No, it's the Trinomal, though. The Trinomal. That's right. right. No. This could be one of the last episodes. Yeah. It could be if you if you subscribe to the fact that the Mayan calendar actually ended in July instead of... And the fact Christmas. that uh, the Earth's plates cannot shift that dramatically in one day, so <laughs> people do not have to worry. Okay. So if you hide out in your bunker, like my wife, and are worried sick, I feel sorry for you. You have issues, and you need counseling. I'll tell you what, though. I'm, this is 100% serious. Because I know there are wackos out there that yeah. actually believe this, mm -hmm. I will be at home with a gun in my hand. I honestly will. Because they're going to ruin it forever. I'll tell you something else. I know we joke on the show. Maybe about 10 to 15, 20% of you believe something like that would happen on the 12, 21. But I guarantee you, something prolific is going to happen on that day. Something is going to happen. I, I don't know about that. But uh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm sitting at home. If you come through my door and you're not invited, you're going to get your head blown off. I think I'll just go out and do something. <laughs> do some wild. No, I mean, I'm just going to be like, oh, you know, I'm working all day. It's like, eh. Maybe the movies might, see, a movie might be dead. You know, movies might not be that crowded. Go to the go. mall. Yeah, why not? Go to the mall. Have a... Have a, pre have, 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 a, have a pretzel. Go to the mall. Have a pretzel. <laughs> All right, anyway, let's get down to business. <laughs> His knees. His knees. Okay, so user questions. Welcome sweet. back. User yeah. questions. Thank you. Uh, from the Buck in five. Mm. What three events do you think changed and shaped sports history more than any other? Well, that is a good uh, question. That's a loaded question. That's a very good question. Uh, whether whether you you know I mean I know it happened ten years ago, but undoubtedly nine eleven. Yeah, changed yeah. sports events forever because uh, what, it was like WWE was the first mass yeah, gathering Smackdown Tuesday, with SmackDown. Yeah. Uh, after that, uh, and then the NFL followed. I think about a week and a half later. Mm -hmm. um, but everywhere you go now, I mean, you get pat down. Security is extra right. tight. 
They do tie it to make sure that the uh, thing in that Ben Affleck movie where he plays the character and they sneak a nuclear bomb in one of the vending machines. Yeah. They they check all that stuff now and um, some of all fears. Yeah, it's, that's what it is. Yeah, thank you. Some of all fears. fears. Uh, but yeah, they um, they do all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think another event that really changed the sporting events was the aftermath of World War Two, and I think. Um, that actually had what you had at World War Two was you had you know you had your tar uh, your tires and stuff like that and you had all these resources and other things and they were looking for more sports that you could play with uh, with less materials and mm -hmm. they started to come up with different ways to play these sports and yeah. for a while you had to play basketball I think with like uh, some sort of plastic ball right, yeah. some kind of weird little plastic hybrid yeah. Um, but yeah I mean those are a couple things I can think of off the top of my head I'm gonna think of I'm not gonna you know there's, there's so, so many you can choose from and um, those are obviously good choices I'm gonna go with uh, one from uh, my sport tennis I think uh, Billie Jean King doing what she did um, you know trying to get equal women's rights for them to get pay the same and, and get the equal prize money and the fact that she challenged Bobby Riggs yeah he was kind of in his later years he wasn't as good as he was in his prime but she challenged him won the battle of the sexes and kind of proved that women deserve to get the same amount of prize money that they that the men got which which helps down today he challenged her who challenged her right excuse me he challenged her but in the long run, help women sis because they get paid the equal prize money and they get the, they get the payments they deserve mm -hmm. um, for the equal to the men Another one I think with team sports history, that's a tough one. I added, I, I just thought of another okay. one that changed it. Okay. Actually, I don't even know how I forgot this. Okay. We talked about it earlier in the year, Title IX. Right, yeah. Title Huge nine. change yeah, uh, in sport in the sports landscape. Yeah. Um, another one for me, um, it's tough. You can pick a lot of them. I mean, the thing with Magic Johnson saying he had AIDS, that was a lot of, that was a big thing for him. The announcement. Yeah. Announcement. Um, I mean, there's so many you can choose from. I really can't think of the top of my head, uh, like a huge one. Um, so, but well, that's one fact I can think of off the top of my head was the Billie Jean King thing. Uh, I'd have to say Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier yeah, in baseball. Uh, another big one would have to be the death of Dale Earnhardt, mm -hmm. uh, improving the safety, safety right? and uh, technology in the sport of NASCAR. Uh, How about but, instant replay? Instant yeah, replay is yeah. another one. Technology as a whole, really. I mean, improved. think about it. Uh, yeah, you know, just ten years ago, how different sports are shown and seen, and yeah. how fast you can get updates up to date, and you know things that happen, and you know it's baseball's kind of falling behind men's department. Yeah, they need to pick it up. Definitely. I think Direct TV actually changed it, maybe for the worse too, because we've seen all these commercial breaks the last yeah go on TV, like he said, going back the last ten years. Because if there weren't, if the game wasn't televised back in the past, there were no television timeouts. Right, exactly. exactly. So. so. From the Jeffrey Castro, mm. The Undertaker reaches out to WWE for WrestleMania 29. Who do you guys think his opponent will be, and do you guys think WWE should unify both the WWE and World Heavyweight title? I um, haven't done that before. No, yeah. <laughs> um, as far as the unifying the titles, I've said that before, they should, because it just, it seems like, I guess we said last week with Michael here, um, we said that, you know, there's not many main eventers at this time. Like I said, I, th I said, you know, CM Punk, obviously, John Cena, on Raw, maybe Ryback, and then Sheamus and Big Show on SmackDown, that's pretty much all the main event you have, which is not a lot. Um, so Unifying Tells probably make more sense because it just seems like there's not a lot of talent, not, not, not talent, but not a lot of competition on both shows. Um, as far as Taker wrestling for WrestleMania 29, um, he always does this. Um, he either is close to coming back or he's not there yet because, you know, he's getting old in years and he needs to retire personally. I think 29 should stop because um, he's just going to get, you know, who's going to face him, you know what I mean? Um, who do you think he's going to fight? Um, I said before, I, I think Punk's going to lose the title at Rumble to Rock, so Punk is an option for Taker. I think that'd be a good. I think, I think that's the plan, right? I now. think that's like the best. I, I think that's the best option. A Taker to fight Punk. Um, right now, like you know, I, Jericho's another option if he comes back in that time again. The negotiations with them aren't very good. Uh, they're not on the same page, Jericho and W at this point. Um, but I think Punk right now is the best option for them. I think I'm not gonna. I just don't want to venture a guess as to whose opponent will be because a lot can change. You know, somebody could have a surgery or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it'll be Punk right now. That's just me. Lately, Taker's been feuding with the older school Legends wrestlers, so I'm not gonna say Punk, but I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe it will be something to the effect of what I said. Maybe it will be a, like a Ryback, like a futurist type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as unifying the titles, I'm gonna disagree. I don't okay. think so. Uh, 
yeah, you don't have too many main eventers right now, but at the same time, they're kind of using SmackDown as they have been as a way to maybe build up the others. Mm -hmm. You know, they're using Sheamus, a relatively newer wrestler, uh, as the feuding for the world championship. So I think having that extra belt and having somebody else in that uh, in that top card really kind of helps them develop their talent, even though they're scared to move on with them being their main eventers overall. Yeah, uh, I. I think, like you said, CM Punk, I mean, that's the initial plan as of yeah. right now. Like, yeah, the plans always change. Yeah, the plans do always change. Uh, I think it would make a lot of sense. It also wouldn't shock me if it was uh, Brock Lesnar. Well, we uh, talked about that earlier, too. Yeah, you could be Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker. And I think they should unify the titles uh, just for the simple fact of what he said. There's just not a lot of top-tier guys right now. And uh, the fact that the Big Show has a title makes it a waste anyway, so it's kind of a mood point. But... Uh, I think they should combine their rosters completely. I, this separate show stuff is... It's not working for the ratings. It's not working either. for ratings. It's not going to absolutely terrible. So. And uh, if they really want to make it good, go back to, like, uh, just get rid of SmackDown as a whole, I think. No, I, I, think I, I think I think they need to get rid of all the programming but Raw and maybe one, the, like, the Saturday think, morning show. I, I think they should do SmackDown. And then do, you, do a three-hour... And then do, do a three-hour Raw with all those stars, and they could... Power pack a very good show in three hours. SmackDown has two options. One, they can go live on Tuesday, or two, go on Thursday again. That's it's what they fun. need to do. Friday's a horrible spot. Friday's the death horrible. slot. I've horrible. said that on this yeah, show before. Horrible. It's the television death yeah, slot. Right. It shows move to Friday to die. Yeah. And really, they do. Time to die. <laughs> and it's, not, it's not the 90s anymore. It's not TJF anymore. Sorry. And finally, from Against All Odds 20, do you guys think that David Otunga would be a better as a manager or a wrestler? Um, duh. Um, you know, I, just, I, I like Otunga's charisma, but his wrestling ability isn't exactly the greatest. Um, I've heard stories where he, he, he's not really that safe in the ring. He's kind of clumsy. Um, it seems like he's not, you know, the well, most well-trained performer wrestling-wise, from what I can tell and people have said. But as a manager, I think he'd be a lot, a lot better utilized because, like I said, his charisma is very good. There's no denying Otunga has a very good charisma. Um, you know, you can use that, that gimmick where he went to Harvard Law School. And use that to his use that to his benefit because I think that would help him because like I said he's a he's a wrestler like again he's got a very impressive physique there's no doubt Otunga's physique is impressive but at the same time his wrestling ability isn't exactly someone that I could see going forward as like a you know, a champion or like a singles champion so I think manager is the, is the role he should take yeah I think manager I mean pretty much for all those reasons I agree I I don't see. Uh like you said, he's tried and tried to be a wrestler, and it just doesn't work out. I, I don't think it fits. I mean, mm -hmm. he has enough baby oil for about 20 infants. Yeah. Well, at least, at least he's keeping Johnson in business, right? Yeah, I guess so, apparently. But uh, I, t I think it should be a manager and not a wrestler. I agree. So. All right. With that, uh, we'll anoint this week's Viewser of the Week. And, uh, Why don't you do it since you're back? Okay, I'll do it. Uh, so we will anoint this week since it was a... Highly talked about question. Buck in five. You are this week's Triple Threat Talk, episode 78, Viewer of the Week. We were very about to. And when we get back from this commercial break. Whoa, 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 whoa. We got a little bit of time. We got about and when we get four back minutes. from this commercial break, we will delve into headlines right after this. The Fresh Maker. And welcome back here on Triple Threat Talk. I am Postmaster Jones, Jimmy Biggers. This is the nurse practitioner, Gary Lockard, and Big B, Brandon DeMiro. Nice. <laughs> it's the doctor. Well, and you would, you would do well to remember that. No, see, the beard is the doctor. No. Maybe, maybe it's Bill Nye, the, the Gary, Bill, Bill Nye Gary, 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 Gary Lockard, the, the science guy. Hit my music. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got the bad case of the headline blues. 
You know what? Yeah. We don't have to see those annoying purple sunglasses yes. anymore. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Actually, these yeah. have sunglass clip-ons. Oh, really cool. See that right there, the magnet? I know. Of course I do. So, um, this week, history was made as one Mr. Johnny Football Manziel out of Texas A&M becomes the first freshman to ever win the Heisman, no matter what, it was going to be a, uh, it was going to be first either. Uh, Manti Teo well, was going to be the first Colin defensive. Uh, Colin Klein was going to be uh, the first player out of K State to he win. He would be the first defensive player. Charles Woodson won it. No, no first, first true player. defensive player. Woodson, Woodson played receiver. Woodson, oh, okay. yeah, Woodson did play receiver and also special teams operations. Uh, but yeah, he would have been the first true defensive player. Uh, this was the first freshman, mm-hmm. obviously, and then Colin Klein would have been the right. first. Uh, oh. The first uh, K State player. I agree with with this 100. percent I, I think Man, I think Menzel was the greatest player all year, and I, you know, it, it was a tough decision, I think. But I think the game that ultimately won the high was the game in Tuscaloosa. I I think them going in there and for the time being telling Alabama you're not going to national championship. Obviously, they they came back and they're fighting for it against Notre Dame. But that game was Menzel saying, "I'm here to I'm here." And you're not winning this game. This is going to be my time to shine. He shined. He shined in a tough place to play. And I, I think that's the game that won the highs, and that's the game that put him over the top. I, think. I, w- I would agree. I just think, though, that he, the kid played so well all right. day, for yeah. uh, all year. For him to be a true freshman coming out of high school, this kid, this kid just came out of high school. Right, yeah. And he's going up with these big guys in the SEC. On climb, I think, And just running them through. Yeah. The only problem, I, I, I agree. That uh, with the, with him winning, the only problem I foresee is now he has nowhere to go but down. Exactly, because because he's hit the ultimate plateau by winning the ultimate personal plateau. Well, yeah, by winning the Heisman. Well, next year he has uh, the national championship. I mean, here's here's the funny part: all Heisman winners get to vote for the Heisman. As a sophomore, he will get to vote for the Heisman. Yeah, so it's insane. I mean, here's here's the thing. Um. You know, obviously, you know, I like to win a national championship, Manzel. You know, right. What I'm saying, you know, yes, that's Pepsi, thank you. Um, you know, how, that's water, thank you. Um, you know, to, to a point with Manzel, how long does he stay? How long three does he years. He has to stay at least three years. Three years. Yeah. So, I mean, regardless of the point, even if he, but the problem I have, like, like I said, I agree with him winning. He deserved to win. But the only problem is, what if he absolutely flops the next couple of years? And then it's his thing. And, 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 and I mean, also, but, look at the track record of Heisman winners and their success in the NFL. It's not very it's good. It's not very good. So, it's true. not very well, good. This year is good, but we'll have to see down the road. It's not very good. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, didn't Jamarcus Russell win the Heisman? Or is he just first pick? I, I don't remember, but it's like Eric Crouch, where's he now? Matt Liner. Sean White, where's he at? Back up. I mean, and you make a very valid point. I think the only one making waves right now, uh, well, Mark Ingram and uh, Tim Tebow, and uh, he's making waves in yeah, the wrong reasons. reasons. Right. But, but he should still be playing. Yeah, but we, we figured. You have Mark Ingram, you have Tim Tebow, and you have Cam Newton, who I mean, has just been absolutely some. been on fire the last And RG3 three right now. And R- RG3, yeah, yeah. There's been some. I'm just four. saying, I agree. more often than not, I think, I think going Going forward for him, if he doesn't either A, be in the Heisman conversation the next two years, or B, win a national championship, his stock in the NFL is going to plummet. And no one's going to be like, he had one great year, should we really sign this kid? He's going to end up like Matt Barkley. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Unlikely. Yeah, Matt Barkley. Or Matt Liner. Matt Liner is a backup. I don't know where he even is. Yeah, but he's a, he's in the, he's for the Raiders. Okay, he's a backup. But he's making a good living him doing a backup. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. Backup, backup, court, backup quarterback in the NFL is not a bad game. Well, you know, I know, but Chris Redman. What? Well, I know, but I'm saying you, you wouldn't think Matt Liner would want to not, not want to start? Oh, I know, but okay. Would you rather A, start? And struggle, and then get kicked out of the league in a year, or be a backup for ten years. That's true. Uh, you know, you know. Speaking what I mean? of Matt Liner, I think he might need to make a trip back to Arizona. They need someone. It's possible. Jeremy Lin opens up another lightning in the bottle and scores thirty-eight in Houston's loss to the Spurs. Lin Sanity active again in San Antonio. Yeah, it's active so much that they still lost. Yeah. I, you know, I think um, it's a good fit for him because I think James Harden's a very good player in Houston, and I think uh, this is a good game for him. Although they did ultimately lose, it shows that he's still got some talent on the ball. Uh, Houston's actually one of the surprise teams. They're not the best team in the West. I think the Clippers are, and the uh, um, the, thing? the Thunder are as well. But the who's Lakers, the best team in Los Angeles? The Clippers. How how long? How long? We, how long has it been since we can even say that the Lakers haven't been the team in in Los Angeles? Quite a while. Um, I mean, and the Lakers are really struggling. And, um, and to that point, later on, Postmaster brought up a great point off there before we started the show. Yeah. 
LA, the Clippers being the team in LA is kind of equivalent to the Browns being the hottest team in the AFC North. Yeah. I mean, that's what you had said. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what what is going on in the yeah, sports the, world right now? And the thing is, I, I think with the Lakers, I still reserve my judgment for when Steve Nash comes back. If he comes back and Lakers still struggle, then there's a problem. Yeah, then his name is problem. Mike D'Antoni. Yeah, I, Again, we've all agreed, hey, we all agreed that they should have signed Phil Jackson. Maybe they'll see another coaching change for the years. <laughs> it's like coaching Karis over there. <laughs> Phil, Phil's, uh, Phil's uh, phone. Why does it have like a dartboard? It's throwing darts. See what sticks. The Knicks do defeat the Nets in the what battle a game. for New York, one hundred to ninety-seven. This game was a statement game. I, I think they put their hat in the in the in the ring, so to speak, of one of the best teams in the East. I think they're going to challenge the Heat at the end of the season because the Knicks got a lot of talent. They got Carmelo Anthony who played fantastic against them. Jason Kidd was dropping threes. Yeah, uh, they haven't got Amari back yet, so we'll see how that happens. But I, I think the Knicks are really good. This I season. think when you look at Jason Kidd's three-point performance in this, yeah. you hope that that yeah. lasts throughout yeah, exactly. the year. You really do, yeah. because if he does this. The rest of the year, you lose maybe 15 games total. Maybe. Maybe. If that. Maybe. Because Jason Kidd hitting from the outside opens up the wing and the post, which is a rare combination, and it allows those other players to penetrate, and it allows you to kick the ball out to the outside as a great option. I guess they're allowing him to keep his motor-ass scooter by the bench now. (laughs) Remember, though, with the Knicks, they beat the Heat by 20, and the Heat lost to the Wizards, so the Heat are obviously strong. The Heat yeah. They're kind of having that slump. The Wizards just beat the uh, just beat the Hornets too. The, you mean the Pelicans? The, yeah, the Pelicans. The future Pelicans. Yeah. Crazy, but, uh, crazy stuff. Uh, I think now we're gonna go to Big B for a UFC on Fox recap. Okay. So I said last week that Roy McDonald would beat up BJ Penn. That's exactly what he did. He didn't knock him out, but you know what? I'm thinking. I was talking to one of my friends about this. He was saying that I think McDonald was just beating him up just to beat him up because BJ Penn was coming out of retirement thinking he could beat Roy McDonald as an upstarter. He didn't do that. McDonald beat, beat his face in, and he won the fight in an easy decision. He could have knocked him out, but he didn't. And the fight I want to talk about, I'm absolutely disgusted with this, is the main event fight for the heavy, the uh, lightweight champion, the welterweight title. I believe it's welterweight. It could be wrong. I think it was lightweight. Lightweight, well, whatever. It was for the championship. Though. I can't yeah. remember. Ben Henderson was the champion, fought Nate Diaz. And Ben Henderson won easily. He, he got fought in every aspect of, of the game. But um, if you watch it on Fox, you're kind of like, are they having technical difficulties? You know, what's going on? They kept showing an empty octagon with just like nothing there. And I was like, well, what is going on? Because I, I know Fox is sometimes has problems. Every TV station does. But then I looked it up online the next day. It was apparently during one of the, during one of the maneuvers that Nate Diaz was flipping off Ben Henderson in the middle of the octagon, which shows complete disregard, uh, disrespect and no class by Nate Diaz. And, then, and everyone knows Nate Diaz has an attitude problem. Nate, Nate Diaz always has been like this. He's, he's had problems with this before. He had an incident in strike force. Um, he's done this before in UFC. So it's nothing new. So that's complete disrespect by Nate Diaz, showing no class and no, no respect for Ben Henderson as opponent. And uh, Ben Henderson easily defeated him. And I, I just don't care for his attitude and the fact that, I mean, kudos to Fox. For cutting away because if they didn't, he could, they could have got a hefty suspension, not hefty, but a hefty fine from the FCC, which would have taken a big chunk of money out of their paycheck. I don't think that they. I don't think that the that the FCC would have fined them because that's not that's not an action that they can control. That's really not. Well, if if you if the FCC has not fined people for similar circumstances. Right. Um, I know the Super Bowl thing because that was obviously yeah. planned. They yeah. looked at that, yeah. uh, and that that wardrobe was purposely tampered yeah. with. Right. But with the WWE, for example, and I know I'm going to make everyone throw up here, but with the May Young thing, yeah. even though it was pay per view, mm-hmm. it still had a television rating. The WWE did not get fined right. for that. Right. But so, but there was I, I I did not say they would be guaranteed fined by FCC, no, but yeah. there was a pending suspension because of the fact it was on national TV. It wasn't pay per view, so anyone could have watched it. And luckily for Fox, they were smart enough to do something about it. Yeah. It was weird looking, but they did something about it. So, so um, speaking of fighting and paper, yeah, speaking of speaking of getting knocked out. <laughs> wow. Um, Big B, if you would show this clip here. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> no, not only it did, doesn't even look like he hit him that hard. He did. He knocked him out. He well, knocked him out. He was, he was like, done. It was, it was a sleep. It was a sleep. Um, I mean, it's like this. Oh. Yeah, everyone, everyone was apparently Pacquioing on Facebook and Twitter doing pictures like that. Right? I know, and there was a apparent. I didn't see any of these tweets, but apparently there were a lot of racial remarks made after this. Yeah, and, um, I'll tell you something though. I mean, Pacquiao was the bun of jokes the very next day from every single sports outlet, including WWE. Even the Miz, I got the Miz um, saying you're gonna fall fall faster than uh, Pacquiao in the sixth. Um, you know, it, here's the thing about Pacquiao. Not only 
him losing was a shocker, but him getting knocked out, he doesn't get knocked out very often, Pac. You know, he could have lost a decision like that, horrible for that decision he lost was terrible. Like, that was like he should have never lost. Yeah, that was that, that was, was that was that was against him. I think. Yeah, well, one man, you think so. That was completely one of the worst calls I've ever seen. Um, but you know, this fight hurts boxing in 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 such a way that. And see, that's where I'm going to disagree. Well, well, go ahead and make your point. Well, I'm gonna I was disagree. going to say that you know we all. Here's the thing about this fight. First, before you do that, preface this. Say what we said, what you said on Facebook. I, I said I think uh, yeah. I think boxing is, is is going is is really going down. It's like pretty much dead. It's, I mean, like here's the thing, right? The only boxer anyone pays attention to is Manny Pacquiao. No one pays attention to anybody else. It's not like Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis, and, and they're, not, they're not. No one pays attention anymore. It's only they pay attention to the Klitschko. It, it's Pacquiao. Oh, it's Pacquiao or bust in boxing. That's it. And right. the Klitschko's. It's still, I think it's still Pacquiao. And bust. I think I agree. With it's you. still Pacquiao or bust. Okay. So then you have him going to this fight against Marquez. If he wins this fight, there's no argument. In Mayweather too. Well, we well, well dumb. Mayweather. Yeah, but I'm kind of, they're kind of joined together in this in this topic. But this fight for Pacquiao, if he wins, there's no question. He fights Mayweather. There's no reason he has no no reason not to because he wins. He's not have to fight. He beat Marquez again, so he only has to go to Mayweather. He loses this fight. Now this fight never has to happen. He's gonna be like, like well. Mayweather, because I think Mayweather's afraid of Pacquiao, to be honest with you. He's going to be like, well, you know what? He lost to Marquez. He's not worth my time. He can't beat him. He can't beat me. I'm undefeated. So this fight, this fight to me, pretty much ends any discussion of Pacquiao and Mayweather. It's never going to happen. Because they had to keep fighting and winning, but they, Pacquiao didn't win. So now, the only fighter that I think is relevant in boxing loses, and then the ultimate dream fight we wanted to see for I don't know, God knows how long is never going to happen. So boxing to me is just completely irrelevant at this point. Well, and see, that's where I disagree. You said that, and I put you put that you thought it died when Manio got knocked out, and I kind of disagree. I think that Marquez uh, beating him introduces that that factor of the underdog that boxing needed Rocky and Balboa. boxing has needed like I like I pointed out on the Facebook post exactly Rocky Balboa from the 70s 80s and 90s and then when you had the uh, Evander Holyfield incident that was a huge that was a huge thing and that revitalized boxing for a little bit well, the, the whether not, whether or not this is going to be a short fix or a, or a fix overall right. this upset i think makes boxing a little bit more relevant because now the underdogs can win again. Well, I'm not saying that. And, and, and I think that I mean, this, anyone's got a puncher's chance. Right. And this is going to, I think, if anything, like I said, this is going to help boxing. Now, to the other thing, this just adds one more loss to Manio. That's all this does. Well, I know. Mayweather has his share of losses, too. He's undefeated. So, uh, he had one. I think he's undefeated. Mayweather has never lost. Mayweather has never lost. He's never lost. Never lost. Never lost. Never lost. Never lost. Never. I thought he lost one. He's undefeated. Never. I'll okay. check right now. Okay. Like check. Talking but, while we're talking, but either way, none versus three. I maybe put five losses with as many as they have fought. I excuse maybe up to five losses to still be elite. Yeah. Manio is up to three. One we know was a botch decision, right, exactly. so really it's two. two. Right. So I think that two to zero in the loss column or zero oh and two is still even if he is undefeated. Right. I think that this would still be a good fight. Now, JBL, I told you guys, J, the great JBL did tweet me on on uh, Twitter. on Twitter about this. Um, <clears throat> I, he had said that there goes the fight, there goes the chance for yeah, the biggest fight ever. I agree with that. And I said that I had to disagree because I thought he was talking about history. He was right. talking about money. Right. I right. said behind Ollie and Frazier. Right. He said, then he clarified to me, he said, I think that uh, this would be the again. biggest money fight yeah, ever. I agree. I agree. To which I responded, I think their grandkids' kids will be set for life yeah, after this. Yeah. And I still think there may be some relevance. And we'll continue the subject, and Postmaster will give us the results of his uh, findings after this break. Stay tuned to Triple Threat Talk. Oh, hi, Tom. Hey. My little boy loves playing football. It's a great game. But what is the NFL doing to make the game safer? We're doing a lot. Carl? Well, Tom, we're developing new rules to better protect our players. And over the next decade, with the NFL Players Union, they're dedicating more than $100 million for medical research. Wow. As well as supporting the development of better and safer equipment. And I feel a lot better about him playing. Love to meet the little guy. Ray, meet Tom. Cute kid. 
And welcome back everyone to Triple Thread Talk. I am Gary the Dr. Lockard, sitting next to my esteemed colleagues Big B, Brandon Amiro, and Postmaster Jones, Jimmy Biggers. Uh, at the break we found out that Mayweather has uh, in fact been undefeated. So, but either way, right, you, so know, he's, he's, uh, you know, it's zero versus 0 and 2, like I said, they're still both the elite fighters. Let's fight it. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, Mayweather is 43 and 0 with 26 knockouts. Manny Pacquiao, 54 wins, 5 losses, and 2 draws, and 38 knockouts. So, still, you know, like I said, you know, he's got 5. We know the one was a bot, so he's 4. He's still in that we range. Two draws. Fights, as I said, and 2 draws. So, I still think it would be an interesting fight. Yeah. But, moving on. Uh, Bubba Watson is expected to be named the next captain of the Ryder Cup America team. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, bringing that whole new definition of style. Style and profile. The Michigan. You got that right. Yeah. Woo. You got the Michigan Wolverines off to their best start, a ten at ten and zero since the '88 and the '89 season. That's pretty big. And speaking of basketball, the annual bracket busters event for the teams and non-power conferences will be eliminated after next year's round. About it. It's, uh, uh, it's usually 122 schools over two days from 13 conferences, and I think this is sad for college basketball because you had teams like VCU and like Butler and, and some of the other smaller teams like R Wichita State and, uh, that we've seen mm -hmm. and over the last couple of years really make an impact in the tournament uh, just because they're from non-power conferences, and I think that's pretty sad. Is speaking of sad, going to another issue of sadness. It seems like it's every week with us. It now. does now. I need more. Jerry on. Brown was killed in a car accident while his teammate and friend uh, Josh Brent was driving drunk. An eyewitness, I, this kind of broke yesterday. Mm -hmm. An eyewitness said that Brown was still alive when the car was flipped over and a little bit and burning. So they said that he was calling for help while Brent was staying away and not aiding him and Brent is being charged with vehicular manslaughter and driving under the influence what do you guys think about this? What, what does this do for the Cowboys? I mean obviously it energizes the Cowboys enough to win their game okay. but what, um, first, it, first of all this isn't his first offense right he's done this before had a DUI um, and not only do you put yourself in danger you put someone else's life in danger, and not only that, you ended their life. He has to live with this through the rest of his life. The rest of his life, he has to know that he killed his best friend and teammate by his actions, by be by being stupid and drinking and driving, which is one of the stupidest things you can possibly do in this world. Either A, give someone your keys, or B, call a cab. You're a professional football player. You can't, you can't tell me you can't call a cab. Bully, please. I, I think you can call a cab. I think you can spread the, the change. Um. So, they obviously, like you said, they won this game in memory of him, and the Chiefs did the same thing with, with Javon Belcher. They, they won that game because of that as well. Um, you know, it, and it, it's just one of those things that this happened twice this season where someone tragically uh, dies in, in the sport of football. I mean, one was obviously a more tragic reason than the other, but, you know, like I said, he has to live with this the rest of his life, and it's just, how can you wake up in the morning how can you live with yourself knowing that you did that? I I, I could never do it. I, I don't I don't get it. I just I, it just baffles me that you can't you can't even think about that. I'm drunk. I'm gonna go drive. Like what are you thinking about? I I don't get it. I I never get anything when it comes to drinking and athletes because they have plenty of money to a call a cab. Teams offer services. No. Uh, it's well known that almost any team out there, they offer services that will take you, pick you up. Someone will pick why, you up. Why even take the chance? I mean, it's utter stupidity. Yeah. I think because you're, you know, you're an NFL player, you think you're invincible, kind of like a teenager. You're like, oh, nothing can happen to me. I'm a teenager. <laughs> well, nothing can happen to me. I'm an NFL player. I have millions of dollars. You know, it's like I can get on anything. Well, guess what? Reality strikes. And uh, it's a sad, sad thing, but it doesn't happen just in, you know, with in the NFL. It happens every day. You see people do this stupid stuff. And, you know, I can expect it out of some moron that, you know, lives, you know, the, an everyday life. I'm not surprised, but when you see a professional athlete, uh, a person who is looked up to and looked upon to set a great example, you know, that how a life they should lead, and it just goes to show you that sometimes, A, uh, you know, money isn't everything, and B, money doesn't buy happiness. And, right. uh, I mean, if you have to go out and get drunk, 
and party all the time. It's I I just don't understand. I never have gotten this, and I never will. Like I said to you, it's done before. Yeah, I mean, second offense. I think this is inexcusable, especially if what the eyewitness said is true. You know, he had a chance to perhaps that's, save his friend's life. That's that's the most dis- that's sickening. That that, that is. So I mean, we'll go with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Saints player suspension next. Due to, uh, due to a little bit of a knife in the back from Tagliabu to Roger Goodell. What did we hear on the radio about Drew Brees? Drew Brees said, and I quote, Roger Goodell has absolutely no credibility credibility towards the players right now. None. Yeah, and I think, well, I'm not so sure if it's a credibility issue or if it's the fact that he he honestly thought he could be judge, jury, and executioner. Right. After this, after his investigation into Jonathan Velma right. was so biased. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to renege on what I said. Right. I still think Jonathan Vilma still needs to be suspended yeah. because there was de- he was the captain of right. this defense. He knew about this. And, and again, to Tagliabue's point, he didn't agree with their actions either. Right. He didn't agree with the actions. I well, still think he jumped on every penalty except for the players. Except for the right. Yeah. Yeah. So he yeah. upheld the fines. He uploaded the loss of draft picks. Yeah. He uploaded you know, yeah. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Yeah. everything. Yeah. everything. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things where, you know, does Tagliabue... When, what what is that conversation going to be like between him and Roger Goodell now? Hey, I had to amend this because yeah, I think Vilma was guilty. That's why I upheld everything else. But, but you just can't go around docking players a year. A year is one tenth of most of these guys' career. Yeah, that'll be a nice Christmas party uh, conversation. Uh, Speaking of people losing time, Brandon Jacobs suspended from the 49ers indefinitely. Definitely for the next three games. Keep your mouth shut. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't talk bad about the team. There are reasons you weren't being used. You weren't, you know, you weren't. Well, he's not going to take them off from Frank Gore. I'm sorry. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> that kid, Frank Gore is a beast. Frank Gore or Brandon Jacobs. I'm going to go Frank Gore. I mean. And then now they've got LaMichael James, who absolutely started on fire. He's their rookie. Uh, he was he played, on fire the He played day. fantastic he played, in Oregon. Fantastic. Lights out. Fantastic. Uh, Rashad Mendenhall to the same effect, also pretty much for the same reason, but only suspect, one suspended game. one game from the Steelers. Because they need him. <laughs> Braylon Edwards signed to the Jets, despite mm. trashing that team before. A lot of mm. stuff like that. Hasn't really done much in Seattle anyway, though. So. And the Seahawks score a franchise record against the Cardinals team that forgot they were playing a game that day. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I guess we'll go there first. Yeah, why not? Um, 58 points. Uh, to what? Zero. Um, <laughs> Running up to score. No. A little bit. No, yes. Yes. No. Yes. absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely. They, what do you want to do? Absolutely. What did they even say on PTI? The other, or not PTI, what show were we watching at Sal's? Uh, that was, was it PTI, PTI, I think. Yes. Was, they even said Pete Carroll ran up the score. There's Okay. I mean, oh, okay. Oh, so. okay, okay, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of every ESPN being right because they're on ESPN. It's a lot of crap. It's not, but when they all say it, it does, that's all their opinion. When they all here, say here, here, Here's the thing. Do you want Seattle to take a knee? You want them to just... You don't go for it on 4th and 23 yeah, and try to go in your end zone. Three, you you know, take a shot to the end zone. That's, that's ridiculous. Number one. He is a competitive coach. There's no doubt about that. He's he runs up to score. He had this problem at USC. That was college. college. It doesn't matter. There's a bunch of college teams that do that. So you should, not, still shouldn't do it. Number two, you have said on the show that you were against running up the score. Yes. You have said this You have before. said it. You I'm not saying that he ran up the score. Yes, he, he did. did. 58 to 0. Arizona can't play. It doesn't so? Absolutely <laughs> terrible. So, it whoa, doesn't whoa, whoa, matter. Whoa, 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 whoa. John, calm down. John, calm down. Calm down. He, calm down. John Skelton's QBR voice is 0.04. 0.4! Okay, but listen, Big B. 58 to nothing, and you're trying to score more points? That is running up. Did the they score another point? No, but they tried. Now listen. They tried. Here's the, here's the thing. Well, Matt Flynn, you don't have to yell to get I'm not, I'm not yelling. Calm down. I'm not yelling. <laughs> Matt Flynn threw the pass. It was incomplete. Yes. Okay. And then when, it's, when it was 51 to nothing, when they scored 58, they just ran it. We wanted to take a knee. Yeah. No, you run it. They you ran, ran it, run it, and they scored. Yeah, yeah. it's because Sid Lu- uh, the Arizona gave up. Okay, but then. they're still running they're up still the score. They're still running up the score. You know what you do? What? You know what you do in a case like that? Uh, case in point. 
Case in point, two weeks ago, I'm watching the uh, Broncos-Buccaneers game. Mm -hmm. The Broncos drove it all the way down to the two-yard line. You know what they did? What? They took a knee three times and the game was over. They could have scored. They would have scored. But you know what? They showed respect. How much time? Uh, uh, they showed respect. Yeah, that's fine. How much time was left in that game when they did that then? How much time? Yeah, how much time? They took the ball over like six minutes to go. Okay, but when they're on, we're on the goal line, how much time was left when they took three knees? Uh, like two and, like two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. There's plenty more time in the Seattle game, okay? It doesn't matter. It's, not, you know, you, you, when, uh, it's total running up the score. At, I agree with that. At a, at a pay, now, if this were the 49ers or or the Broncos, you would be saying the same I would thing. not. Yes, you I, would. I, I, would, I would not. Because you said on this show before, you, you are against before. the running of the did, score. I'm, I am against it, but they didn't run up the score. Okay? If Arizona is not going to show up and compete, that's their fault, okay? In this day and age in the NFL, you are paid to play. If you don't have a bronze tonight, you deserve to be scored on 58 points on, okay? If they're not going to bother showing up to, to be competitive against the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle, they deserve to get destroyed 58 to nothing. When you Ever, I'm not done. Arizona is absolutely pathetic. Their quarterbacks are terrible. We're not. We're not. Lindley is terrible. We're not, Rizal is terrible. Cobb is terrible. We're not saying that they're not. Okay. But, but at a point where you reach a score like in basketball for one team. What other thing we saw today? 107 to two. 142. Yeah. So that was ridiculous, okay. dude. Okay. okay then. Mr. Dad was running up the score. That, you, this, this is running up the it, score. No, it's not. Yes, it is. If you're saying it's running the score, then you're saying they should stop competing. They should stop playing the no. game. Actually, I'm in basketball, this, there's actually, a shot clock, so there is no running yeah. up the score. In actually, basketball. yeah. If you want to get technical, the Patriots could have ran up the score last night, but they did not. They did. They took Tom Brady they, out they way early. They Tom took Brady Ryan Russell Wilson. They put in Matt Flynn. And they took out Russell Wilson. And they, they kept they, trying to score. They still kept trying to score. The Patriots weren't trying to score. The Patriots were not trying to score. They were not. They were not trying to score. You know what? Because Belichick, even though I think that I, he his normally, drafting is normally. terrible, his draft choices are all offense, and he totally discounts defense. And for that reason, I don't like Bill Belichick. But at least he has a shred of respect and credibility about him when it comes to pulling his punches. No, normally, normally I would agree with you. But in this case, everybody knows that Pete Carroll is a pompous you-know-what. He did. He, right, he, was, you know what? he ran yeah. up the score at USC. We can, we can agree he, he to disagree. A, he was a jerk at USC about running up the score. It, it's obvious. Right. And he was going to take his shot and run up the score when he could. And it's going to come up to bite him. Okay, you know, it's bite him. You know what? Here's the thing. All right? We're talking about this game a lot here, all right? Number one. It's fine. We can talk about it all I don't, in the next 10 minutes. I don't, agree. Okay. I don't agree with them right up a score. That's fine. You can have your agreement. That's, 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 how the, that's what the show is about. We agree disagree. Right. But you know what I think this game was? I think this game was a statement game. Because I don't think anyone respects Seattle. I honestly don't. No, they do. No, I don't think they do. Are you? They're one game back in the West. I don't think they I don't think they get enough respect, okay? Because here's the thing. I said to you on Facebook, if you ask me right now, Super Bowl right now is New England and Seattle. Right now. Because San Francisco is not playing the best football, and you know that. They're not. I don't think Kaepernick was the right decision. I think Smith should have stayed in there. Kaepernick's too young. I think he's way too that, young. That does not matter because the kid has talent. I'm not saying he doesn't, but the, I, th I think... The kid has talent. I'm not saying he doesn't have talent. He's shredded. I mean, he just, he outdueled Drew Brees in the Saints game. The Saints Niners game. Saints aren't that good. Well, Saints aren't that good. Their, their, their defense is the not. Rams. Their offense is still fantastic, though. The, yeah, the Giants really proved that. Uh, well, the, it, and they lost the Rams. They lost the Rams almost twice. Yeah, they did lose them they, once and they tied them once. They tied them once. Uh, they beat the Bears, but the they Bears beat, are terrible. The they Bears beat the Bears, Bears at full power. They beat the Bears at full power. The Bears Cutler was still, or Cutler was not in that game, but still, their defense, their defense the at the so time was Cutler. in full power. They it was Kaepernick. It doesn't matter. It was Kaepernick versus a full powered Bears defense because Erlacher, Tillman, Jason and the like were still in the. We can score a touchdown. It doesn't Jason matter. Campbell. It's not Kaepernick versus. Campbell well, no. on the dirt. It I'm is Kaepernick versus Erlacher, Tillman, and the I'm rest not, of the I'm not arguing the 49ers here. I want to get back to the Seattle. <laughs> and that is, to your point about disrespecting, you couldn't be right. You want to know why? Because their road record is abysmal. Unless they're at home, they cannot win. And then, so, you know what? And you know what? I'm going to say this now. I, I think the Giants, before the Seahawks game, the Giants win the Seahawks was the biggest game of the year. I think Seattle now takes that spot. They they go into a place that's not easy to play in Chicago, and they won. They don't win on the road. They don't do that. The, the, year, the year they won the Super Bowl in 2005, they won all their games on the road. They can't they, I don't know, at home. They can't win on the road. They just, they just can't do it. And they go in Chicago, and they win. That was a big game for them to win. I'm still saying that the 49ers are the Super Bowl. They have some things to figure out. I'm not so sure that they're not going to lose. That they're not going to beat Seattle because you know what? Russell Wilson and Colin Kaepernick are both young quarterbacks, and the difference in the defense of the 49ers is the 49ers defense 
eats rookie quarterbacks alive, just like Bill Belichick has the propensity to do, even though his offense, his defense is lack, he does it all the time too. We'll continue after this. Hey Cam, thanks a lot for coming to my school today. No problem, Nate. I promise to exercise and eat right. Don't forget 60 minutes of play a day, right? And I'll grow up to be big and strong like you. Absolutely. I'm playing in the NFL. Yes, sir. I'm be drafting number one. Maybe. I'm become a starting quarterback of the Panthers. <laughs> okay. You can be my backup. Excuse me? And make Panthers fans forget about you. What? And become your mom's favorite player. Whoa. I'm just loosening my arm. And we're back here on Triple Thread Talk. I am Big B Brandon here alongside Matt, the nurse practitioner, and yeah, Jimmy Postmaster Jones Baker. So, um, so back to the point. Back to case the, in yeah, point. Case in point. We'll wrap it up. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say to wrap, kind of wrap, put a bow on it. Nice little bow. Christmas, right? <laughs> uh, Don't forget the bow. He, he is right, and you're right about Bill Belichick. That's why uh, I think getting into the big game this week, that's why I say the 49ers are going to have trouble. Yeah, they for, are. I agree. For, for I'm I'm fully, I fully agree. They are going to have trouble. Yeah, and the, and, the, and the thing is now, I applaud the NFL. I applaud them. If I, I would stand and applaud, because I would, I would apl stand and applaud, but it might not get me on the camera. But Yeah, because that's a lot to get on camera. Oh. What he's talking about while he covers back from that. Uh, no, I'm fine. No. Okay, go ahead. The game's supposed to be, the summer 20th was supposed to be the Jets and the Chargers. Who cares? There's no even bigger though, playoff though, implication. Even though the Jets can technically sum up the playoffs, because if they do, I'm going to puke. Because the Jets have played absolutely terrible. They don't deserve to get in the playoffs at all. They don't deserve it. So then the NFL uses their muscle, you said flexing, mm -hmm. and puts the Seahawks game and the Niners game, Seahawks and Niners, on Prime Temple Sunday night, which is a game I will be tuned in from, oh, yeah, from first sure. kickoff to last snap, okay? We might have to do, you came to my home the first time, right, I yeah, yeah. to come to your home. Because it's at home, home for us, right? Home and home. Oh, right. Um, and this game gets very interesting if Seattle takes care of business against Buffalo, which I'm very worried about that, but hopefully they can take care of business. And if New England beats you guys, on Sunday, that's a game that is going to be one of the biggest draws of the year because it's it's for the NFC West, time, if, pretty much. If if the 49ers beat the Patriots, yeah, that kind of nullifies the next right. Sunday's game. Right, it's still a good game. It's still a good game. Right, but, but if in the event, yeah. That they do not, that they win the uh, the Patriots, yeah. they clinch. Yeah, they, they clinch by half, half a game. But, but they clinch a playoff spot. They don't clinch a West game. No, no, they still clinch the No, they, they said the Niners, if they win there, they clinch a playoff, but they end Seahawks. Yes. Yeah. So if Seahawks win, they still have yeah. Because they'd still be a game and a half back. Well, but I'm saying. So, but they still clinch a playoff Well, I'm saying, but important. theoretically, San Francisco lose the last two games. If so. both teams win, it stays the same. Right. It, it yes. doesn't matter. And yeah. even if. Uh, like you said, so it, it's still not decided. Right. It's, definitely it's not still decided. not decided. Let's move on from yeah. this one. So, uh, uh, I guess we can talk about the Monday night game. It was kind of a surprise to everybody. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not surprised. Well, I'm not surprised at the outcome, but I, I thought the game would be a little bit more competitive. Uh, where has this Patriots defense been all year? Yeah. It, it was absolutely yeah, outstanding. Yeah. I mean, this is the same Patriots defense that lost to the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, that was ages ago. And, and the and Jets and in the overtime. Jets. No, they beat the Jets. They beat the Jets, but they took the Jets to overtime. Yes. But then, so, then Thanksgiving, they woke up. Obviously. <laughs> the Mark Sanchez kind of <laughs> fell down a little bit. And an astonishing stat, the Jet, or the, the Patriots... Mm -hmm. The last what three or four years are twenty and zero in December. Yeah, at home. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, either twenty or nineteen and one. Yeah. Um, no, they're twenty and up because they won this game. This doesn't surprise me because I've seen this. I've seen this act before. I have seen this act before. I've been in this play before. I've been in this play plenty of times. The Texans get on the big stage. They play the Packers. What do they do? They got destroyed by Green Bay, and they get another one. Monday Night Football. The lights are on. It's prime time. Prime time. And they lay an egg again against New England. It's because this Texans defense has trouble against elite quarterbacks. Brian Cushing is a big miss for them at this point. Brian Cushing. J.J. Watt. He can't do everything. Cannot, he cannot do this on his own. And when you are rushing that pass rush... Mm -hmm. And that O line picks you up. Guess what? It is game over yeah. because you have taken another person out of coverage in order for someone else to get a pass down deep. Yeah. It is not a good gamble. The fact that they were rushing JJ Watt on Tom Brady all night was a bad yeah. move. And this story, <laughs> this this battle may have been a little bit different yeah. 
in the event that they spared him and dropped him back yeah. instead of pass I, I felt bad for J.J. Watt. The one play I felt bad for him, it's like, he has this defense. He has this team's only defensive No player. sacks. No, not just that, but here's the thing. They, had, they have knocked him down a long time. Brady. Yeah, they knocked him down. The one play that I saw that I just felt like, you know what? J.J. Watt are bust on defense. It was a play where they had, they, it was a screen pass to Danny Woodhead. He's running out of the field. What happens? That was insane. J.J. Watt punches it out, and he goes flying into Who's there? No one, no Texan. A pigeon just, just lands on Brandon Marshall recovers it. Brandon, Brandon, Brandon Lloyd. Lloyd. Brandon Lloyd. He lands Brandon on Lloyd it. Like, recovers it. Where's the other Texans? It's just J.J. Watt, and that's it. They got nobody else. And I feel bad for them, because that's all they have. So, I mean, this... To me, it seems like... And I, I brought this point up to you earlier. I think the Texans also struggle against using those tight ends. Yeah. When you have a receiving tight end such as Aaron Hernandez, or and I think the story the story would have still been the same with Rob Gronkowski in the game. I think that they have trouble covering uh, covering the the outpost mm-hmm. when these tight ends go out to receive. Yeah. And when you add a, a, a blocking tight end mm-hmm. and you open up another lane, just say good night. Yeah, I mean. Exactly. They had trouble with this offensive line the entire yeah, day. Yeah, I just it was ridiculous. I don't think Houston. Everyone thinks Houston was the Super Bowl pick. I don't see it. They're not. They're not there yet. They're very close. They're not there yet. They're not an elite team yet because, like I said, they get in these big stages and they fall flat. They fall flat. You look like you've been wanting to say something. Oh no! I, I, you all have covered it masterfully. I was just going to say uh, to kind of wrap up that game that. Uh, Tom Brady looked absolutely outstanding. Uh, they had a running game, which they haven't had in a while. They're really starting to have a running game. Yeah, a defense. And it definitely makes New England scary. Yeah. Uh, and they're getting right and right at the same time like they always seem yeah. to do. Uh, speaking of scary, um, the Redskins pulled a win 31-28 against the Ravens. Yeah, Captain Kirk Washington is glad they have cousins. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> Captain uh, Kirk WW Cousins, right? Yeah. Um, you know, when I saw this happen, RG3, obviously, I was obviously scary because... He had an ACL injury back in 2009 while I was at Baylor, so he had to take a year off for that. And then happens again, and you don't know what's going on because leg injuries are very, very dangerous in the NFL. I, there are so many of them, you don't know what's going on. But luckily, the Kirk Cousins came in and won them that game. This will keep them alive in playoff contention. And the Ravens just, they had no offense in the second half, and, and firing Cam Cameron obviously was, was effective that. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things, it's the Joe Flacco syndrome. Sometimes he's got it. Sometimes I call him Joe Fluca. Joe Fluca. I don't think you can say that because of their record over the past couple of years. They're falling. They, they, you know what? They looked at one point one of the better teams in the AFC. Now they just look like they're falling flat again. I mean, they, they, they just can't seem to do anything offensively. Their defense didn't do anything to stop Washington in the second half. It's just Ravens look. I mean, the AFC North looks, like I said, Cleveland looks like the best team in the AFC North right now. I mean, it's pathetic. And let's talk about them. They destroyed the Chiefs 30-7. to Yeah. You know what? Uh, Pretty good. We noticed the Chiefs, we noticed the Chiefs, but we've been on on thirty. We've been on record saying this team is a playoff team in the future, maybe a year or two. They got a good quarterback. They're better than their record. They got a good running back. They need just some good receivers who can catch the football. They've been three in a row. And their defense is good, too. Hottest team in the AFC North. So I I say next year is a year that they maybe go 8-8. Andrew Luck throws up a horrible game, and still they beat the Titans. However. 20-3. However. He clearly was not... Uh, he was down on yeah. that one play. Yeah, he was kind of got shafted, yeah, did, but in shot. the end, luck was on their side. Yeah, it's and, just, it's uh, crazy. They pulled one out. Crazy to uh, the Broncos got up for practice Monday morning and turned their alarm clock off. I was like, oh, we beat the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, Vikings, the Vikings pull an upset and beat the Bears 21 to 14. I don't think it was an upset. I picked up. I mean, it, I it, picked wasn't, the Bears, it wasn't an upset, but at the same and you know me, I'm high on this team. The reason I call it an upset is because of the placement of Percy Harvin on yeah. IR. Yeah. That's why I thought this was Here's nice. Here's the thing about the Vikings. And plus, I, the reason I picked the Vikings is because Bert Urlacher not being there. That, that is their defense without him there. And their defense hasn't played well, you know, in a couple weeks. Obviously, Seattle was able to beat them in overtime. Um, for, like I said, it's J.J. Watt or Bust on defense. It's Adrian Peterson or Bust on the offense. Christian Ponder. I, I disagree. Christian Ponder is not. Percy Harvin, but he was out of this game. Well, I'm, I'm saying. But it's been a two man. Actually, in the early part of the year, it was a three man right. show. Yeah, but because Christian Ponder right, now, was incredible. Then, but now he's kind of now falling, he's falling off. He's falling off. You but, know why? Because he's not dating a sideline reporter. He's got a woman in his life. Those women. Like Tony really, Wilson with Jason Simpson. Exactly. Simpson. That's exactly Carry what Carrie right? Um, but yeah, I, you know, obviously. Adrian Peterson definitely deserves to be considered for one MVP of the year. He definitely should win Comeback Player of the Year for the injury he suffered last year. And he's come back. I think he's going to disagree. Clearly, he, he can 
possibly bring Eric Dickerson's record for most rushing yards this season, which is phenomenal to say the very least. Um, and they're still technically in the playoff race, so good for them. But um, you know, and the Bears, the Bears might not even make the playoffs now. I mean, they're falling apart. The defense doesn't look that great. The offensive line for uh, Chicago has always been suspect anyway. So I, the Bears just don't look very good right now. Uh, it very well could be Adrian Peterson. However, I would not be shocked if it was Peyton Manning. Uh, well, you said that you said that if you know Peyton well, MVP. Well, I said well, I said what they've taught, what's been widely speculated it could happen for the first time since 1980. I think it's like four. Uh, a player wins the MVP the and the comeback player of the year in the same year. It's possible, right. but I also told you that I can see Adrian Peterson winning comeback player of the year and Peyton Manning exactly. the MVP. Because I think they'll do it where, like, you know, Adrian Peterson such a remarkable story, and it's like we got to give him right. this one because he came back from something that not many people come back from and play as well as right. he did. Exactly. And, like, and then we'll give Peyton Manning the MVP because he's played the best football any quarterback. So. Right. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Another big one here was, uh, where, where was it? The Giants, 52, the Saints, 27. Let's not run up the Talk score. about it. Shutting no, it's not. No, it's not around the score. As a matter of fact, you it it because lately? the game was close until very late. Yeah, I mean, it was the defensive end. Here's the thing about this game. Special teams for the Saints exactly. bought in this game. David Wilson nearly had 300 yards on special teams. Are you kidding me? Kick it out of bounds. I don't care. You have to stop this guy. He, they're like their starter field position was like at the 30. What are you doing? You have to change it up, and they're not. And they just kept kicking to him. He kept running down the field. Mm-hmm. The kicker had to tackle him twice. And we got to see the uh, traditional Victor Cruz salsa dance in the end zone. Mm-hmm. A couple times. Yeah. Uh, and Eli. Eli is masterful as always. Mm-hmm. Can't spell elite without Eli. The exactly. Pam, speaking of elite, Cam Newton has been playing like he is the elite the last three weeks. This past week, no exception, as they knock off the Falcons. Now that is enough. 30 to 20. I don't trust this Falcons team going forward. Uh, they're too, they're, they're too inconsistent, kind of like the um, Texans. You know, I wonder I wonder if it's this thing. If it, it, they've already clinched the spot. Yeah. Maybe the Falcons have shut down. I mean, just mentally. They're they're still playing their players because it's the worst idea in the world to sit your yeah, starters. Yeah. I, I think but, against the divisional point, they wouldn't do that. And how do you let like, Cam do it for 72 yards? 116 rushing. Yeah, and then he does a Superman pose because he wants to do it because he's a diva. A diva. diva. He's going to get replaced by a little kid in the commercial. Week. <laughs> week. I'm still saying my arm. I can't I'm, believe, I'm, I'm, I can't I'm, believe I'm saying this. Week 15. To oh, take God, so fast. Oh, my oh. God. Why? That's one of my gripes about football. It's so short. It goes by like that. It's, it's the greatest show. sport on TV, and it goes by like that. Yeah. Yeah. What is it, 50 days till Beyonce now? Is that no. 50 days till Beyonce? Stop it. Stop it. No. If you like it, you should have put a ring on it. He did. Oh. He did. He did. He did. Anyway. Big B, uh, you go into this week's pickums as we're showing the board here at a 125-80 and 80 record. Uh, gained some more ground on the dock last week with a 131-74 record. The doctor still holds a two-game lead, 133-72. and 72. So we were all doing very well. Right, just for the record. This past week, you were eight and eight, we were both ten and six. Yep. Right, so, so very good stuff. So we will kick off Pickums here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thursday night football, the Cincinnati Bengals in a game they must oh, have. Well, I'm sorry. They must yeah. have go on the road to Philadelphia to take on Nick Foles and the Eagles. What worries me about this game is the fact that AJ Green has been quiet the last two weeks. He had some drops last week. He had some drops last week. But they've got to have this. They are going to draw up some plays that's going to free up A.J. Green. They are going to get that man the ball. And because of that, I'm picking the Bengals. Um, you know, obviously both teams last week had disappointing – one had a disappointing win. Disappointing loss, one had an impressive win. Obviously the Eagles scoring at the end. And the, the Bengals going to get a nine-point lead to beat Lucy the Cowboys 20-19. to, 19, 20 to 19. Um, I'm going to go with the upstairs. I'm going to pick the Eagles. I think the Bengals are starting to struggle a little bit. I, I, you know, I think the Eagles maybe win at home. So I like Nick Foles. I the do. the yeah. reason that I'm, I do want to say, the reason that I'm picking the Bengals as of late, especially last year, they were not choke artists like right. they have been in right. the years past. Right. I think that they recognize that they have to win this game. Well, the reason I'm picking the Eagles, I think Nick Foles is the future of that team, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you... you, uh, you uh, Said earlier, you were impressed with the way Nick Foles led the comeback against the Bucks last week. That was impressive. Uh, they are at home. Uh, the Bengals are coming off a devastating loss. They should have won that game. They the should have won that game. Yeah. No, re- no business losing that game. They have to travel on a short week to a hostile environment in Philadelphia. I like the Eagles here. Yeah. And uh, we're going to finish up our pickums after this. Stay tuned to Drive Threat Talk. Hey, Peyton. Welcome back. Thanks, Papa. What are we going to do to kick off this season? Same thing as last season. One million free Papa John's pizzas. Good idea. Two million free pizzas. I like it. No, 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 no. 
one million free Papa John pizzas. Two million pizzas it is. Let's do it. All season long, Papa John's has two million free pizzas for Papa Rewards members. Sign up now at PapaJohns.com, where a large buffalo chicken pizza is $10 or any large $2 more. Better ingredients. Better pizza. Papa, Papa John's. John's. Really? Two million free pizzas? Wait till you see what's next. Hey, welcome back here on Triple Threat Talk. I am Postmaster Jones, Jimmy Biggers. This is Big B, Brandon DeMero, and Gary, the Dr. Lockard. And we were knee deep in the week. Oh, 15 <laughs> pickles. <laughs> <Even> pickles. <laughs> so let's move right along. Thank you. This week. The Green Bay Packers, Packers go to Soldier Field to take up the banged up and beat up Chicago Bears. Go on the Packers. Uh, Packers win this game. They clinch the win the NFC North. And I say Packers win the NFC North. I pick the Packers. Go Pack Go! I think the Packers win. In a very yes. pivotal AFC this South matchup, a game that could swing, tip the pendulum as it were, the Indianapolis Colts go on the road to Reliance Stadium and take on Matt Schaub and the Houston Texans. Texans are mad, but you know what? This Indy team is good. Uh, they play the Texans two of the next three weeks. The Texans, have, Texans have Colts, Vikings, yeah. and, and Colts again. And then uh, they're playing them at home. I'm saying I, right now, depends on the, how they play this game, I can get a better feel for the matchup. I feel they're going to go one and one, and that is home at home. I'm going to pick the Texans here because they are mad. Um, I think the Colts are going to get up for this game, but... At the same time, when they played an elite team in the AFC, like the Panthers, Patriots, they got they got shellacked. I think they're going to get the same. I think the Texans win this game. Uh, I agree. I think the Texans win. They clinch the division, but the Colts obviously yeah. will be the number one wild card spot. Mm-hmm. The game's tough for you, fella. This next game has really got me torn sideways. And I know you're probably thinking, how could you possibly be torn? But, but my reasons for thinking, I'll get to in a moment. The Baltimore Ravens are at home against the eight in a row winning Denver Broncos. AFC West winning. I gotta say, the Broncos are gonna win this one just because that uh, the the yeah, the Ravens defense is still not fully together and. You know, Joe Flacco did fall a little bit. I gotta think he's gonna turn it on. Can he outdo Peyton Manning? The no, answer is no. no. He can't. Um, actually, a little reunion for you. Uh, Jim Caldwell is now the offensive coordinator yes. in Baltimore, so it'll be reunion for Peyton Manning. Um, I, I don't. I don't trust Baltimore right now. I, I don't. They're probably gonna get in maybe ten and six or nine and seven. They're they're not. They're gonna kind of squeak in the playoffs. I like ball. I like Denver. Um, I'm a, uh, the reason why I'm kind of torn is this: the Ravens have lost two in a row. I know they're kind of falling off, but they get the return of Ray Lewis. So he is back Sunday. They're, they're remote, yes. He's going to play Sunday. He targeted the game against Peyton Manning to come back. Mm-hmm. Smart one. So, he, so he gets, you get your emotional defensive leader back. You're at home, coming off of two losses. But I can't pick against Peyton Manning. I'm going to Bronco. Homer. <laughs> In the battle of the Sunshine State, this could be... Part one of No, I think it's, this is not totally it's a sleeper game. It's, no, it's this could be a sleeper game. This could be... Uh, Break out the pillows. This could be get your uh, pillow and blanket and take a nap game. Get your the Jacksonville Jaguars go about oh, a couple hundred miles south to take on the Miami Dolphins. Take a bus. Uh, you know what? Take a train. C- Cecil Shorts <laughs> is injured. MJD still out. I got to pick the Dolphins with this one because the playmakers on the Jags are injured. I don't care if the Jaguars had Mark Brunel. I picked the Dolphins. <laughs> Mark Brunel. Oh my God! <laughs> and their original coach, Tom Goff. Yes, Dolph- Jimmy Smith, Keenan McCardell, Frank Taylor. Give me the Dolphins. The what could be a surprising, very good game? I think. I believe it. Not surprising I, at all. I, I think, think it's it, going to be a good. I think game. it's going to be a very good game, and I think it's going to be a very tough road game. Good question for Washington. mark: Who's playing quarterback? Uh, Washington Redskins go on the road to the hottest team in the AFC North. Yes, he said that. <laughs> He missed me. He didn't say that. <laughs> the three in a row winning Cleveland Browns. See, for this, I, I don't think that the quarterback situation, because, you know, Kirk Cousins is very good. very good. No, I'm not saying he's not good. I'm saying it's still a question mark who's going to oh. Well, yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, like I put on Facebook, he. Uh, that was the first time all year they converted the two point conversion when he was playing QB. Mm-hmm. He t- he let him on a game tying and a game winning. Well, right. Kirk Cousins. Exactly. <laughs> and as good as I think the Browns are becoming, I don't know if they have anyone that can cover someone the caliber of Pierre Garçon. Mm-hmm. He's amazing. Alfred Morris is there too. Uh, Alfred Morris is there. He's a he could be up there for Rookie of the Year along with Andrew Luck. I'm gonna have to pick the Redskins. Yeah, I picked the Redskins as well. I know we didn't really touch on RG three as much. 
Um, you know, I want him to play because he's a fantastic player, but I think he doesn't need to play this game. I, I think you can with Kirk Cousins against the Browns. I, I think they can win this game without him. Uh, uh, like I said, the, the Browns have won three in a row. Granted, one of them was against the Chiefs. Uh, Brandon Whedon did not even throw a touchdown pass last week. So I think it's one of those. The defense is playing really well. They're telling they're his rookie QB, just get some reps, get experience, manage the game, and let the defense yeah, and our running game will take care of it. But And they are at home. And even though the quarterback is in question, I, I think the Redskins are a bit too much. Pierre Garçon, uh, I, I think the Redskins are. I remember the game again played against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh had eight turnovers. So. Yeah. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings coming off a uh, big win over the Chicago Bears, go on the road to a team that uh, so long the they slipped a victory out in the last minute, come from behind fashion to beat the Bills, the St. Louis Rams. You know, I think Adrian Peterson is going to create fits for this Rams defense. Now, even though the Rams uh, tied with the 49ers once and lost to them, or to beat them the, the next go-around, right. one thing was a factor in both games. Frank Gore tore it up. He had 100-yard games, a, couple, a pair of touchdowns in both games. I, I look for the same because Adrian Peterson is a little bit better of a running back than Frank Gore is. I'm going to say that the Vikings are going to win. ADP, is, if he stays healthy in this game, should be more than okay against the the Vikings or the Rams. This is tough because whoever wins this game is going to be seven and six. Um, well, seven six and one if you're the Rams. Um, Rams are surprising me. I, I didn't think they'd be this good. Obviously, Jeff Fisher knows what he's doing. He's turned that team around. NFC West is going to be competitive next year unless Arizona doesn't get a quarterback, and Arizona's going to be even worse. Um, they're going to be worse. <laughs> <laughs> Win less than four games. Um, I think the Rams. I, I think the Rams. Um, I, I like the Docs' way of thinking. The only thing I would say is I think Colin Kaepernick's a better quarterback than Christian Ponder. Uh, so, but if you're running the ball. I know, but it was you said it yourself. He only had – Frank Gore had 100 yards. That's really not a lot. And the thing about it, it is, but it's it, not. It is, but it's not. But at the same time, when you have the defense of both of these calibers, that's going to be more than enough. And the thing about ADP was – if you watch the game against Chicago, he ran the ball the same exact way. He did power out to the left. There isn't like oh, same he can change. Well, I'm just saying, but they, they're, they're they're both dome teams. Mm-hmm. St. Louis probably needs a win, but I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think they're going to get in the playoffs regardless. I think it's. it's, it's you know, I mean, it could. It's going to take, take a lot of work. And Redskins, Cowboys. Yeah. But uh, I, I I think the Vikings somehow find a way to win. Okay. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers go on the road to the absolutely abysmal New Orleans Saints. You know, I, it's not that I think that the Saints are bad. Their defense is horrible. Don't get me wrong. That is horrible. Yeah, horrible. Drew Brees was bad the other day. Fact yeah, that he the, doesn't look the same. The fact no. that Drew Brees is still on that team makes their offense, like, powered by 10. However, this Bucks team is up and coming. They've got a lot to prove. I just, I, for this one, I don't know. Where's our coin at? <laughs> I really? Think, I think it's... I, you know, I don't think I have a coin, fella. You're gonna have to go out and just make a decision. Imagine. Man up, flip an imaginary coin. You, use your uh, great. You know what? Use, use your if you, use your in, imagination. Okay. I'm gonna use my imagination here. The both of these letters, B S. All right. Well, yeah. which, which one Where is the going? bull? The bucks. I'm picking the bucks. Okay. The the bull is gonna give them the horns. Uh, yeah. I like your uh, your analogy there. Yeah, thank you. Nah. Um, Shut up. I, I like the box. This, you know, it's just like Drew Brees looks doesn't look the same. He threw five interceptions the week before. He threw interceptions in the game against the Giants. Uh, I mean, if your offense can win your games, if your de- I mean, if your defense is that bad and Drew Brees can't complete the passes to his receivers, the Saints got no shot. I, p- I picked the Bucks. Uh Saints are at home. They want to salvage something out of this season. Uh, I picked the Saints. Oh wow! Really? Surprise. So, the Bucks is just for me and you. The uh, New York Football Giants go on the road to the the Georgia boys and take on Matty Ice and the Atlanta Falcons because they've been a fail here lately. (laughs) See, I'm not sure which... (laughs) Teams <laughs> <laughs> who shows up? Who comes off the It bus? is December, so you know the Giants are going to show up. Yeah, the they Giants always show up in show December. Up. Um, I don't know. I think the Fal- this is a tough game because, you know, if the Falcons are in shutdown mode, which they might have been, Cam Newton played phenomenal, though you usually want to at least try to slow down the quarterback if you whether or not you're shutting down or not. I just think it's it's a great quarterback both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. It's great receivers both sides of the ball. Absolutely. And 
I guess I just have a little bit more faith in the Giants' defense. I think they're gonna. I think that the Giants are gonna win this one. Uh, I picked the Falcons only because they're at home, um, and you know the Giants are one of the teams that are inconsistent. They win one week, they lose the next. They're kind of you know up and down. So I picked the Falcons. Uh, I like the Giants to win here. Uh, had it not been for a bad opening start in the first half, Peyton Manning would have beaten the Falcons earlier this year, and I think little brother figures them out and the Giants win. Yeah. Absolutely. The Seattle Seahawks, in a game that Big B is sweating bullets over there. Take care of your business. Go on the road to Canada. Hey. I didn't know there was a Canada f- uh, team in no. the NFL. The Toronto Bills. Oh, yeah. To take on the Toronto Buffalo Bills. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's on a neutral field. Relative. Not, not really. Sort of. It's, sort of. it's on the road. But uh, I'm going to say, I, you know what? The Seahawks team is incredible. They can't lose on. They can't seem to get it together on the road. Except mm-hmm. for Chicago. Except for Chicago, but they have it in them. Yeah. And I think that C.J. Spiller, that them losing Fred Jackson is going to hurt a little bit more because C.J. Spiller is not used to taking all those reps. At least he hasn't been in a while. Uh, you combine that with some desperately cold weather. Seattle, they're both used to cold weather. Yeah. But, I mean, when you have an extreme environment, no one has a more extreme environment than the Seattle yeah, Seahawks. Yeah. i got to pick this. I mean, obviously, I'm worried about this game because, like I, like I said, the game they played against Arizona, Russell Wilson didn't really play that much. They took him out and put Matt Flynn in, so he didn't really get a lot of reps to play. Um, you know, they, they have to win this game. I'm, I'm picking Seattle. Um, this is the game they have to win to really set up that match with San Francisco to make it really interesting. And, you know, Pete Carroll's got this team where it needs to be. Playing very well for good football. He made the right decision to play Russell Wilson because he is a more dynamic player. Uh, even though they did run up the score last week, I'm picking the Seahawks. <laughs> <Damn> break. <laughs> Carolina Panthers go on the road to the San Diego Chargers, who absolutely walloped the Steelers last week. You know week. what? The Chargers suck. I'm going the Panthers. I, I like the Chargers. Hopefully, if they're smart, which in the recent memory they're not, they should get rid of North Turner. He should be gone. And I'm like, everyone gets on Phil Rivers like he's so great. He has more turnovers than any quarterback in the last two seasons. Yeah, he's real great. I picked the Panthers. I picked the Panthers as well. The Detroit Cowardly Lions, because they've been playing very cowardly here lately, they blew a 10-point lead against Green Bay when they had them on the ropes early and could have des- delivered the knockout punch. It, it shows that. And they just... Folded up like an Italian beach chair. Like <laughs> and I, I remember I read I read a, a, com- a comment from someone about the Madden curse. It's kind of like being like, oh, you're kind of going extreme. Games like the game that happened in Thanksgiving. That's the Madden curse for you, right yeah. there. So. They go on the road to take on the worst team in football, the Arizona Cardinals. It's because of that I'm picking the Lions. <laughs> I mean, when you're gonna go with Ryan Lindy as your quarterback who played absolutely awful against the Jets, awful. I picked the Lions. This game is going to make me throw up. I picked the Lions as well. This next game... Give me my barf bag. This next game might make us all throw up. The Triple Threat Talk. Week 15. Triple Flush. Toilet Bowl Game of the Week. The Kansas City Chiefs go on the road to take on the Oakland Raiders. You know what? I think Carson Palmer's a lot better than what they have in Kansas City right now. No matter how, you, no matter what you do, yeah. Carson Palmer's not a bad. Player. No, he's not. he's not a bad player. Uh, I'm picking Car- I'm picking Carson Palmer on the Raiders. Um, on this one. First of all, with the, the Raiders as bad as they are, why don't you give the ball to Terrell Pryor? Give him a shot. Why not? Your team's not going right anyway. I, I think they should give him a shot. Other than that. Um, both these teams, well, I mean, obviously, you know, the Chiefs are going to go 11 and 5 on the AFC West, but. <laughs> and and Roma can never win Coach of the Year. Of course, of course. Of course. Yes. Um, I, I picked the Raiders. I mean, both teams are just bad. And Raiders. I mean, I, Raiders, feel bad, Raiders. I feel bad for Raiders fans, but. I agree, Raiders. Uh, in a battle of one of the uh, longest reigning rivalries in all of NFL, uh, we all know there are epic clashes in the 90s and the 70s. The Pittsburgh Steelers go on the road in a game that. Whoever wins makes the playoffs. Whoever loses, I think, is done like dinner. So much the Dallas Cowboys. You know what? I, I don't even think that it's whoever wins gets the playoffs because I still don't th- see the Steelers in that playoff spot. I was going to pick the Steelers, but now that I'm thinking about it a little bit more, I think that the Cowboys are going to show up for this game because they're at home. Uh, I'm gonna. They won three out of the last four. Say say whatever you want. I think the Cowboys still don't know who's gonna play quarterback. I think they said Big Ben, but the way he looked, he still looked injured. 
Uh, uh, Big Ben looked phenomenal to yeah, me. It was their I'm defense that was terrible. I'm still, I don't think it was Big Ben. He definitely, there were several people that agreed. I just don't see it. Uh, we'll make our official picks on this game after the break. Press forward, one. Press forward, one. That's called a juke. I know your eyes are closed, but really you should look at this. Fast forward, rewind. Right there. Wait, let me slow it down. Ooh, I missed the tackle. Here. It almost looks better from back here. That is convincing. I mean, I mean you're crying. <clears throat> Madden NFL 13. Ready to be for everyone. A new look, a new feel, a new way to Madden forever. EA Sports. It's in the game. <laughs> And welcome back here on Triple Threat Talk. I am Postmaster Jones, Jimmy Biggers. This is the Doctor, Gary Locker, and Big B, Brandon DeMillero. And we were delving into the Steelers Cowboys before the break. And I'm still kind of struggling a little bit with this. You know, seven and six, either way, the other the other playoff spot is gonna go either to the Bengals or the Steelers. It's not guaranteed uh, to anybody who wins this game. Uh you know what? I didn't say that though. No, no. I'm just saying. I, it's I said to me. That, I, I said that whoever loses would probably be out. It, 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 to me, I gotta kind of go with the Steelers. I think they're gonna step it up and try to give the Bengals a little bit of run for their money. Yeah. I don't think Dallas plays well at home. Uh, I think the Steelers. Ah, uh, little curveball, me there, fella. Mm. I like the Steelers as well. The week 15 game of the week. This is, might be game of the year, and they've already said this may be a possible Super Bowl preview. That's my, pre that's my prediction earlier. This year. was a lot of our predictions. No, no, not so much. But 49ers at Patriots. When it comes to this game, Bill Belichick usually does give young quarterbacks a run for their money, or rookie quarterbacks. The problem therein is Colin Kaepernick is not your average rookie. He is not a rookie. Second year in, he's not a rookie. He's the only player in NCAA history to both pass or to pass for 10,000 yards and rush for 4,000. Uh, that's a milestone in and of itself. I think when you look at it from an angle, each team has its certain ways to go around it. New England struggle. They're a lot like the Texans. They do struggle when you bring in multiple tight ends of the game. I told him, expect a lot of Delaney Walker, expect uh, Vernon Davis, expect Bruce Miller, who they use as their fullback. If they get him out in open coverage and they get him the ball, he will literally run over the defense of the, of the Patriots. Now, on the other side of the ball, the offense here is a high-powered offense but they have faced two high-powered offenses this year and come out on top of both of them, which were the Packers and the Saints. So can they beat a high-powered offense? Yes. I told him, I think it's, in my opinion, this is one and one over the next two weeks. I don't know which one is which. For that matter, I'm going to pick the 49ers here because they know what's on the line. Harbaugh last year, when he knew what was on the line, he stepped it up. He did. There's no doubt about it. He stepped it up. They make a game plan here, and I would not be surprised if Kaepernick is not cutting it. With the playoff implica implications in this matchup, if Kaepernick is not cutting it at the half, they're going to switch out to Alex Smith. And I'm not the only person that thinks that. People that know more about football than this brain does feel the same way. I think either way, the 49ers get it done. Be not because they have to, but because they need to. I'm picking the 49ers. Um, Patriots are at home. And I think um, I, I think they don't bench Kaepernick regardless of how he does, honestly. And I, I think the stage will be too bright. I think the stage will be too big. You're, you're playing... You know, one of the greatest teams of all time. Or, or, you know, with this team, you got Tom Brady and you got Bill Belichick as the coach, and that, that tandem has been one of the best tandems of all time. Belichick and Brady. Um, I, I like the Patriots in this game. Patriots going to prove that they're probably the best team in the NFL at this point. Um, I agree with uh, Big B here. I'm taking the Patriots. 
Alright, <laughs> the most abysmal Monday Night Football. Okay. There's been some bad ones Why all year. Why are for this Monday or Thursday? Monday, it seems like every week the Sunday night game has been rather good for the most part. Couldn't they have flip-flop Sunday night and Monday night? Can they switch it? I guess they want to put the Patriots on two, two Mondays. Well, I guess we're all going to get good ratings next week. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. The Jets at the Titans. You know what? Get my pill in blank. I don't... I haven't said this a lot this year. I gotta go with the Titans. I mean, the defense of the Jets is crap. If Chris Johnson shows up, he's gonna single handedly beat the Jets. I, I gotta go with the Titans. I'm sorry. And remember, Mark Sanchez is the 34th rated quarterback. <laughs> how, how many teams are there? 32, right? That's worse than uh, Blaine Gabbert last well, season. Before you make your pick, I, I got to humor you guys for a second. After the game the other day, after they after they beat Arizona, okay? Who? Seattle? Uh, no, after oh, the Jets. Oh, last week, okay. Did the Jets beat Arizona? Seven to six. They were, they, they were interviewing Mark Sanchez, okay? Now, he's being interviewed, so he doesn't see the stat line at the bottom of the screen. Right. Where there's a stat line. And the stat line says, like, 18 out of, like, 30 or something like that, 111 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. He said, well, I think the key to this game was I just caught fire at the right time. You caught fire? 111 yards and you call it catching fire? No touchdowns. No touchdowns. 111 yards and you caught fire. Yeah, you caught fire on your way down. Has that term ever been more wrong? <laughs> God. Um, I mean... Technically, the, the, the no. Jets. No, no, we're doing this. Listen, technically, the Jets still are alive in the hunt for the playoffs because they are technically they are what six and seven. Technically, they're still alive, <laughs> but technically, but they don't the planet. They don't deserve. <laughs> yeah, they don't deserve <laughs> to be in this position because they've played absolutely awful this whole year. And generally, <laughs> Pluto is a planet. I agree. Um, but you know what? As much as I hate to pick this, don't do it! I pick the Jets. No! 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 Oh my god. I picked the Titans. You gotta be kidding me, Big D. No wonder why he's in last place. I think the Vikings right last week. Oh, oh my. Cheese and crackers. Moving on to rest. Monday night snooze ball. Man. Oh my god. Right. Intently Pluto. <laughs> Touchdown tape to learn. <laughs> BBR, touchdown, intercept, touchdown. Uh, so, uh, OVW this week. Yes. Uh, had a couple big happenings in OVW. Flash Flanagan was determined to be the masked man that, kept, that keeps attacking TPT. Poor TPT keeps getting beat up by a masked man, and we finally found out it's Flash Flanagan. Really? Really? All this build up in, in anticipation. And we're hoping it's Randy Royal with cheese. And I said it should have been Johnny Spade, which would have been nice. It would have been a nice change. Well, apparently he's attacking referees now. Well, but I'm saying. Hey, they deserve it. What? How dare, that, how dare you say that about Chris Sharp and Josh Ackcroft and the other guy? Jordan Barker and the other guy. And Joe Wheeler. Yeah. And Taryn. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> She's back in TNA. But Flash Flanagan is the masked assailant. Assassin. The number one contenders match for the women's title. Jesse Bell defeats Heidi Loveless. Poor Heidi. So, so we'll see Jesse Bell versus Taylor Hendricks for the 150th time. Ginger Fest 2012. Yes. <laughs> All right. That was a lot. So that's OVW this week. Pretty short. You know. Yeah. Just highlights. So highlights. So uh, we'd like to thank OVW as always. Frank Miller. Uh, Terry Bodie, Cheryl Conley, all the boys and gals over at OVW Wrestling. You can check out all their fine work at ovwrestling.com or on weekends on WKYI dot, or TV. I'm sorry, channel 138 <laughs> at 1 and 9 o'clock or on Blip TV. Or at OV Wrestling. I did that already. Did you? Yes, I did. I did. The, beard, the beard is sorry. Yeah, I know. Um, Usually messages get... Um, I like the way you said weekends. You like? I, I, think, I think I think you're assuming you said the TV thing. You're assuming everyone has internet on the TV. Yeah, TV, TV, TV. So uh, be sure and check that out. Uh, they have a uh, homecoming is this Sunday. Uh, so the new batch of graduates 
will be uh, on the spotlight, as and it were. Friend of the show, Austin Bradley, has a match. a match against a very big opponent. Uh, 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 Roberto is actually going to give a statement about his injury. Uh, so yeah. right. Is Austin fine? Uh, he didn't say. He said he's a very big opponent. Right. Uh, um, it's Jack Black. No. Um, okay. You know, we didn't cover that this time, but we actually, obviously, you know, all kidding aside, we actually do want to wish all the students uh, good luck on homecoming because we followed everyone last time and we were very proud of them for the job they did at homecoming. So obviously, our thoughts definitely go towards them this Sunday as they prepare for their biggest night of their lives so far. So. Right, absolutely. And we should also say, while you two will be watching uh, wrestling, TLC. or TLC, I will be watching the 49ers beat the Patriots. See, he's not going to watch TLC. I'm not watching TLC this week. I don't blame him. This oh, is a big Seattle was playing the Niners. If it was team. next week, there would be two people not watching TLC. <laughs> so. Well, I'd watch it on the online, but whatever. Anyway. So, uh, that moves us over to WWE. Yeah, and my and first my first topic, and Team Road Scholars wins this match against the primetime players, the Usos, and I'm pretty much going to face Mysterio and Sinkara at TLC. Now, I'm going to say something here real quick. Um, it's very impressive that Cody Rhodes came back from the injury he did in the short amount of time that he did come back from it. Um, you know, he's injured for about a month. I saw videos of him rehabbing like crazy. He was doing training down at FCW. Very impressive. I mean, there's, there's no way to say that, you know, sometimes people get injured, they take longer to come back. We, they expected him back in early January. Um, you know, kudos to him for really working hard and getting back to the ring. I didn't expect him to be back so soon. Um, very impressed with his work uh, at Regiment. However, I'm not impressed with his John Holmes 1970s porn stash I agree that he's that. repping. Looks like Magnum PI over there. I guess you got a little bored and asked him to add a little spice to your life. Although I will say it was nice to see Aaron Rodgers shaved his. Off. Yes. See, no, it's not shaved and he didn't. So it's, 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 I like that. I said, Evan Fofo. You all, you all changed things up a little bit. Now he gets to do, be the one to give the mustache. Now, now he's no, he's no more. He's not dashing anymore. He's got the mustache. So, um, but yeah, like I said, very impressed. You know, it's, that take, that takes a lot you know, to come back from that that quickly. Um, and as we were saying earlier, Miz interviewed Road Scholars. Uh, one of the best segments I thought of Hilarious. all year. Pink and stink. Pink and stink. And um, you get dropped quicker than Manny and Pacquiao on the six. six. That, that was great. hilarious. Um, it shows how good the Miz is, obviously. The Miz is it. Yeah, I like the Miz. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it for WWE at that standpoint. Plus, the, uh, the only thing was at the end, uh, the shield attack. I thought that was very, very nice. The, the ending show. was great. Yeah, it was very good. I like the brawling segment at the end. Yeah. Uh, as we all know, CM Punk is out. He had that knee surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a good... Uh, uh, question to point to you guys and to put out there on the poll. WWE did a poll. Do you think that the WWE should strip CM Punk of his title because he is unable to defend it and he is injured, or should he be allowed to keep it? Um, I think he should be allowed to keep it because if he gets stripped of that, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be mad about that because that reign was, is so prolific and how long he's had it and he just take away from it because of an injury is not fair. Yeah, I think he should keep it. And I think, you know, God forbid, they they uh, the first Monday he's back, they defend the title on Raw. Yeah, so I think uh, that's a good I, idea. I agree. I agree. He uh, he should keep it. As a matter of fact, I weighed in on the uh, poll on WWE.com that he should be allowed to keep it. And surprisingly, 67% when I last checked said he needs to have it stripped away from him. I was kind of shocked at that. I thought more people would. Uh, well, because, you know, people don't know as, about as much as the inner workings as we do. Yeah, so. So. could be. Anyway, so. So moving on to uh, TLC picks. Tender love and care. No. no. Try that again. Tables, ladders, and chipmunks? Well, you know, well, you know, well, you know, well, figures out. We'll take a break and be right back so he figures that out. We'll be right back. Trouts. Oh, baby. Check this out. Hey, come on. You want a little TV? You want a Dorito? Are you hungry? I want to get a Dorito. Babe, don't hurt my dog. And welcome back here on Triple Threat Talk. Uh, I am Pulsemaster Jones, Jimmy Biggers. This is Gary the Doctor Locker and Big B Brandon Namiro. We were delving into TLC and we we're going to make our picks, as it were. Yes. So let's start it out with the YouTube slash Facebook slash WWE.com slash pre-show. Slash pre-show. <laughs> Santa's helper. Number one contender, Diva. Diva. Battle Royal. Alicia Fox. Layla. Natalia. Caitlin. Tamina Snuka. Rosa Mendez. Oksana. 
Cameron, and Naomi. Why is it they only have one name? <laughs> you know what he said? Demons don't have. Animals. It's not like. It's not like Naomi, Cena, or you know. Oh, Cam- whoa! <laughs> what are you implying? <laughs> you mean another? You mean Nikki Cena? Yeah, Nikki Cena or Cameron Ziggler? You know, no, no, Bree Ziggler. Just because. I mean, this is, this is battle royal. Obviously, anybody can win. Uh, I'm gonna go Caitlyn. I think it's still high up. Ah, uh, you know what? I initially was going to pick Caitlyn, but I think they're going to give a slight push to Tamina. I think I picked Tamina on this one, actually. I'll take Caitlyn. Okay. Rey Mysterio and Sing Cara versus Team's Road Collars. And Cody's mustache. And Cody's John Holmes mustache. I'm going to go with Mysterio and Sing Cara. I picked Team Mustache. You would. i go with Sing Cara and Mysterio. I would. Oh, Cody. Oh, Cody. Cody. The, 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 Enough the, of that. The mustache really gives him an extra uh, added uh, incentive. Now, now Brandon won't be the only one giving mustache rides. <laughs> the U.S. title is on the line. Shave it, Cody. It, Oksana Cesaro. Well, she's not with him anymore. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the champ defends it for the sixth time in the last two weeks. That's good. <laughs> at, least at least he's defending. Yeah. I'm going to go with Cesaro. I'm going to go with Cesaro in six, seven, eight languages. Yes, C, whatever. Cesaro. Cesaro. We. In the Intercontinental title match... Kofi Kingston, the champ, goes against the challenger. The English... Easy. Barrage, Wade Barra. Woo-hoo! A little bit of bias talking, oh, but it is his time. I'm going to go Wade Barrett. Uh, I still think they're high on Kofi Kingston. I pick Kofi Kingston. I pick Kofi Kingston. Because, well, never mind. It doesn't <laughs> matter, Watch. Watch it, fella. <laughs> the world heavyweight title is on... In a tables match. Tables match. The champion, weighing in at 450 yeah, pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big yes. show. <laughs> against the great white. Shark. Jaws. Jaws. Jaws? Jaws? I think a match. Think of a Jaws. <laughs> you know what? I, I th- was thinking about this. Sorry. A chairs match. I said. I, I was thinking about this the other day, and I think that what, what they're doing match? is like. Doing tables match. Nobody. Sheamus started out as a champion. Big show. They're having this battle back and forth. They usually don't do it, but I think the, to kind of change things up a little bit, I think they're going to give it back to Sheamus. Uh, Who I cares? Uh, a SmackDown title match is, is abysmal. Even though I like Sheamus, he's, one of my, he's probably he's, he's my favorite wrestler at the moment. I, I don't care. A chairs match, really? It's just like another disqualification match, honestly. I don't know why they even have chairs matches. It's kind of stupid, to be honest with you. I picked the Big Show. I don't think he's losing anytime soon. I, which, I begrudge when I say Big Show, but I picked the Big Show. Um... I picked Seamus with a twist. Lemon, lemon twist? Yes. Lemon twist? Why would you do that? Well, depending on how the match order goes, that's why I say it's a twist. Okay. okay. If the match order we goes... We have to pick definitively here. If the match order goes that the Cena-Ziggler match is before this, I pick uh, Big Show. Okay. But if the Cena-Ziggler match is after, mm-hmm. I pick Seamus. Okay. Additional picks. But I'm going with Sheamus. Fine. I'll go with Sheamus. In the ladder match for the World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank contract, which I like this idea. I'm not happy about it. I'm not uh, happy about John it. Cena versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, I'm not happy about it because, you know, if Cena does win, which I don't think he wants, so I am picking Dolph Ziggler here. Um, it's not fair if Cena does win because he's already had his chance. Well, yeah, but he sacrificed his chance for the greater good of the company. Mm-hmm. And we all know that Vince loves it when people sacrifice themselves for the greater good of the company. Hot fuzz, the greater good. You know what could happen? I just thought about this. Your comment about match order got me thinking. You're probably going to say what I was thinking. What if Dolph Ziggler says, you know what, I've got this match. I'm not going to take a chance on losing I've it. I've said to you that too. Sheamus, Sheamus could win this match. Dolph Ziggler could cash it and in has no match. and just Cena, it would be Cena and Ziggler for whatever. No, Cena would have no match. He would have no match. No. Oh, that would make it even worse. What? Your point. Let's extend this a little oh, further. Oh, God, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. That's yours in your brain right no. there. Jack 
three shot. If the match oh. happens, I'm actually gonna pick Ziggler because I don't think they'd screw him like this. I think they're just marking in this. Brandon's like got a whole But I honestly right. think that Ziggler yeah, I will love cash it. in. I love, I love that, that theory though. That would be the way the WWE could save this year for them, if they did that, because if you screw John Cena out of a match the last pay-per-view of the year, and you give Dolph Ziggler the belt, that would completely save the WWE's year. And if I were writing for this staff, Which I would have done this. This would have happened. Yeah. Let's take it a little further. That's not. What if, say if. If wishes for fishes will be an ocean. Shut up, Jim Ross. Uh... If Dolph Ziggler catches in, he cancels out Cena's match. Okay? Mm. Let's say Ryback gets taken out. I'm picking Dolph Ziggler, by the way. Okay. But uh, let's say Ryback gets taken out, and then they put John Cena in the main event against the Shield. In Team Hell No. Yeah. Could happen. Yeah. I don't know what they'll do, but yeah. I take Dolph Ziggler. And I guess, is this the main event or no? Yes. Think? Are they going to be the main it event? The Shield. And it's TLC match, too. So. Team Hell No! No! Yes! No! Yes. No! <laughs> no! Daniel Bryan and Kane are teaming up with Ryback, Skip Sheffield, Ryan Reeves. Ryan Reeves, whatever you want to call him, to take on Dean Ambrose, yes. uh, Roman Reigns. Who? Huh? Who? 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 Anyway. And the third guy, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. Or Tyler Black. I'm or picking Tyler Team Black. Hell No and Ryback. I would pick. Team Hell No and Ryback, but I think they ultimately go with the Shield. I think they want to build this thing as far as they can, and I think them winning will be a big uh, shocker and a big boost for that team. I pick the Shield. I pick uh, Detective Mackey. Detective Mackey? You ever seen The Shield? The oh, show? Oh, yeah, that's his name. I pick The Shield. Mm -hmm. Although, I will say, I think this is going to turn out to be a very good pay-per-view. I think it's going to surprise some people. Yeah. I think they really are going to do some stuff that's going to surprise because it is the last one of the year. Yeah. It is the last one to the end of January. So there is a long right. break in between the pay-per-views. They're going to want to leave a you know, a good lasting impression on you till Royal Rumble comes around. And since we already know the main event for Royal Rumble and we pretty much know who's going to win the Royal Rumble, they're going to have to do something to really... Yeah, um, I was actually going to bring up after Tia, you know, those, are, those are picks. Um, we said this earlier, and I told you, there's actually a show Saturday evening in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and every match on that card is the matches at TLC. Every single match, it's the same. It's the same. So, you know, if you're in Wilkes-Barre and you watch that show, I would keep an eye on the similarities possibly on Sunday. Well, you, well we've seen in first-hand account that a lot of times house shows are for practice, for mm -hmm. TV or right. pay-per-view. Right. So, they do the matches and they go through the moves for practice purposes. Right. So, Which well, makes sense. Well, 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 to the other point, the match is like, you know, Cena versus Cena is not a ladder match. No. Team Hell No and Ryback right and the Shield is not a TLC match. You know, stuff like no, that. No, but so, still. Still the same principle. Right. right. So, so you can still have the same kind of ending, sort of, and that and the other. But it's uh, definitely looking forward to that. We'll be tuned in at the Demiro Residence, me and Big B and probably a couple of our WWE pals. Not you, be, Not me. Uh, we'll be, I have uh, bigger fish to fry. Yes. Fish? What kind of fish? Yeah, Fondue? Cod. Oh, cod. cod. Oh, okay. So, good stuff. Uh, also, check out next week is WWE week. If you're a wrestling fan, it is a very good week. You have uh, Monday Night Raw on Monday, which will feature the Slammy Awards, which is always an interesting show. So much fan show. voted as well. You have the very special Tuesday live edition of SmackDown, which they should do that every week. Or Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, you have Tribute, uh, to the Tribute. Tribute to the Troops. Which is always awesome. Yep. Uh, Thursday is... Something with the Miz. Yeah. Something, something. And then on Friday. This is like this a, is, I like this. This is a nice play. I like this. Okay. CM Punk will do a USA Network hosting of the movie The Game Plan. And also, we know that Dwayne The Rock Johnson stars in The Game Plan. So I like this. Yeah. This is a secret way of building up a feud, and I like it. I do too. It's very good. So, good that stuff. Does, that does it for wrestling this week. You have a wild card, sir. And we're going to get to our wild cards in a second. But I think after the news this week, and go ahead and roll the clip footage while we're talking um, about well, this. Well, I'll talk about wild cards. This, I think, is the idiot of the week right here. I, do, you, do you know this guy's name? No. Is he even worthy of having a name? <laughs> after something like that? I shoot free throws better than that. Seriously? I think my dog can make a free throw better than that. You know, I, I, 
I don't know what you call that. It's not a free throw. It's no. not an air ball. It's, 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 it's a throw. It's all maybe, a throw. Maybe. He was practicing for a toss up. Uh, I, 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 okay. I think it was a lob. But, anyways, whatever it was, he's earned the title of this week's Triple Threat Talk Idiot of the, of the Week. And uh, now that we've uh, got the Idiot of the Week uh, out of the way, uh, you guys have any wild cards? I don't. I have one that I think might draw some discussion. Okay. I don't have one. I don't, I don't think I'm going to And I know we normally don't talk. Oh, I actually did have a wild card. Go oh, ahead. I do too. Sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. I'll go because my... Um, okay, go ahead. I wanted to give a congratulations out to uh, Steve Johnson, who I you follow tennis. Uh, he went to the University of Southern California, USC, uh, played there for four years, won four national championships. is very impressive. They actually was in an article on the Tennis Show's website, the top ten to watch for in 2013. So that's a big... Uh, no, big accomplishment for him that the tennis show is looking out for him in 2013. He made it to the third round of the U.S. Open, which is a big accomplishment for him. So I look forward to him making some waves this this year. I, you know, I'll see how far he gets in these Grand Slams. You know, he plays throughout the year, uh, especially for the American uh, team and the American tennis as a whole. So I, I congratulate to Steve Johnson for getting on the radar, getting the recognition that he mostly deserves. Uh, my wild card is I just remembered. Uh, Erica has already graduated, but tomorrow night she walks. So that will be very awesome. I'll be at Freedom Hall uh, to watch uh, watch Erica walk. So that will be really so, cool. Uh, interesting topic this week, and we don't talk about this stuff a lot, but I, I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, if you haven't heard by now the whole uh, Kate Middleton situation, oh, yeah. she's mm-hmm. pregnant. Uh, how she's pregnant, and with the hospital situation involving the DJs in Australia, mm-hmm. and them prank calling and actually getting through. And then through all this, the nurse that apparently, not the nurse that patched them through. The nurse that took the, the call. The nurse that took the call uh, killed herself. Mm-hmm. She apparently committed suicide. Uh, these Australian uh, radio DJs are uh, now, they were fired, mm-hmm. and now they po- face possible criminal charges. Right. Do you all think this was a joke gone wrong? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, do you think they took it too far? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, to, to their defense, I don't defend them because people do this all the time. I get it. People right. prank call it. You know, people make a living doing that. Uh, should they be charged criminally? Then? Yeah. To this, for, criminal, this, yeah. for this to go so far, for this to go too far, I agree with. Were they out of line doing what they did? No, people do this kind of stuff. And they all the probably time. didn't think they would get no, through. They, they, they even said that. They're like, I thought we never would get through. Because of the circumstances and involving the royal family, yeah, they were going to get fired. Should they be prosecuted? No, because no. they did not kill that nurse. She decided to take her own life. Yeah, unfortunately, right. yeah. it's very unfortunate, yeah. and mm-hmm. definitely we do sympathize. Yeah, but. I don't think that these DJs should be charged criminally. No, no. So no, I, I agree too. I don't think they should be charged criminally. I just think you know it was kind of a ridiculous situation, and all in all, as a whole. it just went wrong. Yeah. The, the whole thing. It's a bad joke gone wrong. Exactly. So, so uh, that does it for the show this week. Good show as always. Speaking of bad jokes gone wrong, we don't work with them. But check out Tosh.0 to see a whole lot of bad jokes gone wrong. Oh, man. Jeez, a zinger at the end. Uh, it's hilarious. Right. Woo. So if you want to zing over to Facebook and click that like button, please Lame. do. Yeah. I got my John Cena action figure. <laughs> he was on the Tosh.0 I, I watched the other day. Uh, Crispy Cream. Right. So if you want to like us on Facebook, please like us at Facebook.com slash Triple Threat Talk. You can follow us on Twitter at Triple Threat Talk. And you can send us any comment or question you have at Triple Threat Talk at Yahoo.com. And of course... Maybe our, uh, visit her fabulous website, TripleTheTalk.com. Spit it out, Junior. <laughs> this is Big B. This is The Doc. This is Postmaster Jones. And until next time, this is Big B signing off. And next week, we're going to watch the last show ever. Stop, Stop it. it. everybody. Stop, Stop it. it.